My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to create a sepia tone from scratch, going well beyond the simple canned effects to create our own unique look. Now, what I'm trying to simulate here is a very old photo with some nice color tones coming through. Here's how I'm going to do it. I start with a picture, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually get the contrast where I want it. So if you need to do any sort of levels adjustments, go ahead and make those and get it so you're happy with the contrast between the brights and the darks. Here I'm really getting some nice bright whites and some high contrast in the image. And that looks pretty good. You can see the before and after. So we're really just compressing that range down there to get a higher contrast value in the shadowy region. Now let's go on to the next adjustment and we're going to add a black and white adjustment. Now by default there are lots of presets to choose from to really pop things, and that's looking pretty nice there. Here we chose a high contrast red, or as opposed to a high contrast blue. Now the red is really popping the red, and you see that the reds and yellows are boosted, while the other color channels are pulled down to compensate. We can also click Auto and let this go to town on its own, but you see as a straight black and white conversion, that's pretty lame. We don't have a lot of popping in the rocks there, and the sky looks washed out. So let's try that high contrast red again, or even an infrared, and you see we get some nice looks. I think that's the best one there, and we can go ahead and manually tweak those as we see fit. Once you get the contrast where you want it, you can then start to map a color. The best way to do that is with the gradient map. Now down here below, you'll find the adjustment layers, and there's of course the ability to just toss on a hue saturation and click colorize, but that doesn't do very much. Instead, I recommend the gradient map. And this allows you to map a color to the image. Now the default gradients aren't very attractive. In this case, it's mapping a dark color and then going up to white for the bright color. You could choose to apply that using something like hue mode and it'll be much more subtle or color. And you see that does okay. I'm a bigger fan of using things like multiply and that really gets in there. But instead of this simple gradient, take advantage of some of the more complex ones. And you could blend those in. Now, here we're getting a bit of banding. I'm gonna open that up and just tweak these. I'll switch the spots here. That's looking pretty good. And let's try changing its mode. With the Move tool selected, I could just press Shift Plus and step through different blending modes giving me some pretty wild looks. I like overlay there, that's working well, nice high grit. And let's try the color one for a little more subtlety, and that looks good. So there we're getting nice rich color. Now it's a tad saturated for my liking, so I'm gonna toss on one more adjustment layer, and that is vibrance, and just back the saturation off a bit so it's not quite so intense. That looks good. Let's go ahead now and add a solid gradient, not a gradient map, but a regular old gradient. And we'll choose the black to white gradient. There it is. And we can even change that shape to radial if we want. I'll reverse this and just set it like so. Now this works nicely. We could change that to multiply mode and get a nice vignette effect and just bop that down a bit. Take that into around 30%. And we're getting a nice darkening at the edges. I like that. If you click on it, you can actually move that around by just dragging the center of the gradient to set your focal point or hot spot. I like this rock down here. Looks good. I'll lower that opacity just a bit more. And I'm just getting a subtle darkening at the edges that I like. Now, to finish this out, I'm just going to add a little bit of grain and a little bit of blooming. First off, the grain. I'll add a new layer and press Shift-Delete to bring up the Fill dialog box, and we'll fill this with 50% gray. Now, 50% gray is just a neutral gray that's a great starting point when applying a texture. We'll now run our filter. We'll do Filter, Noise, Add Noise. Pop that up so it's nice and big. Make it Gaussian and monochromatic. Looks good. Let's soften that out a bit. So 
it's not quite so dramatic, a little bit subtler. Press free transform, and I'm going to scale that up to 200% of its current size. So it's a little bit larger. And then with the move tool selected, same trick, shift plus to step through the modes. Color burns looking nice. So's overlay. Let's toggle that off and on. Notice we're getting just a nice little modeling and a little bit of texture added. I think that's a nice grain structure. And we'll choose select all, copy merged, paste, and let's just blur this copy out with a heavy blur. And we'll place that into soft light mode and lower the opacity to taste. And you see we get a nice little blooming effect where some of that noisy detail is just smoothed out and it's a nice look. So there you have it. We started with a pretty plain image, looked like so, tweaked the balance of levels to get a nice contrast in the shadowy regions, went ahead and did our own black and white adjustment to make certain areas pop, remapped the color with the gradient map and toned the colors down a bit with vibrance, Put a gradient on to draw the viewer's eye to a focal part, added in a texture layer, and then blurred the whole thing out and blended it together to create a nice, softer, subtle look in some of the noisy regions. So there you have it, our own custom created sepia tone. Nice way to go about it. You could save this image off and use it as you see fit. And of course, adapt this technique to your own liking with your images. For understanding Adobe Photoshop, my name's Rich Harrington.